Okay, so this lesson is for science 24. We're still on matter and chemical change. This is 2.2, the changes that occur. Um, so we discussed chemical reactions last class and how do we know that a chemical reaction has occurred and we talked about when you have a chemical reactions, the substances that you start with are not the same as the sub substances you end up with. And as we go through this, we will also see that some chemical reactions require energy. So for example, cooking requires energy and then some reactions will release energy. So for example, demolition of a building or like fireworks, um, that would be a release of energy. <coughs> but with chemical reactions, usually some new substance is formed and that new substance will have new properties of its own. And usually this type of change cannot be reversed. And the example I gave last class was cooking an egg or baking a cake. Once you've baked a cake, you can't go back to the raw materials and, and um, so that it looks like batter again. So on the left-hand side of an equation, uh, of a chemical equation, you'll have reactants and then you'll have an arrow pointing to the right and you'll have the product. So the reactants are the substances that are there before a chemical reaction. So for example, I'll just use the cake example, your reactants would be the egg, the flour, baking soda, baking powder, whatever it is that you put into um, the batter. And then you'll have heat added and then you'll have your product. And the product is the substances that form afterwards. So the cake and any other gases that are released um, and so on, those will all be products. Um, how do you know if a chemical change has occurred? So there are some indicators, um, and we've talked about this a little bit, and uh, we'll be talking about this a lot more as well. How do you know a chemical change has occurred? Because, <clears throat> um, for example, if you take an ice cube and melt it, it has changed state. But that's a physical change. It's not a chemical change. Because you can take that ice, turn it to liquid by melting it, but then you can um, take that liquid water and make it back to ice. So you can, you can go back and forth. So that would be a physical change. So a chemical change... Again, something new is formed and it's going to have new properties. There also might be <laughs> the release or absorption of energy. For example, you might feel an increase in temperature. That means some energy is being released. Gases may be given off. New solids may be formed. A color change may occur. And sometimes odors are given off as well. Those are all indicators that a chemical change is happening. We're going to look at a couple um, reactions today. The first one is combustion. So combustion is a specific type of chemical reaction. And this is when a substance will combine with oxygen to produce heat and light. So for example, any type of burning, burning a candle, um, a campfire, um, anything like that. It's a combustion reaction. Um, another example is if a fuel burns in oxygen, um, again, um, there's some burning happening and oxygen is always required for a combustion reaction. So in lighting a candle, candle wax burns in the presence of oxygen and then it produces carbon dioxide and water as well as um, you see the light and the heat. Um, as well, we have fossil fuels. So much of, <coughs> much of Alberta's industry depends on combustion reactions where fossil fuels, um, such as oil and natural gas are burned. Okay, so I'll have a quick video here on examples of combustion. So we'll watch that video. I'm just going to pause it here. Um, so the next type of reaction that we're looking at today is called a neutralization 
reaction. And we talked about this a little bit already when we were looking at acids and bases, and you can combine an acid and base, um, and that will be a neutralization reaction, such as taking an antacid. So it's a type of reaction during which an acid and a base produce a salt, compound, and water. So that's the neutralization reaction. It's a The reactants will be the acid and the base, and the product will always be a salt compound and water. And then the products will have a pH of about 7. So a neutralization is basically taking an acid and base and neutralizing the pH of it. And we know that the pH of something neutral is 7, 7 or about 7. So the pH of the products in a neutralization reaction will be neutral <coughs> of about pH 7. Um, whereas the, the reactants, the acid would have a pH of below 7, the base would have a pH of above 7. Um, example here is cooking. Um, an acid-base reaction between baking soda and an acid such as vinegar. Vinegar contains an acid called acetic acid or lemon juice, which contains citric acid. It'll produce carbon dioxide bubbles that will make a cake rise. Another example is taking an antacid. So we talked about magnesium hydroxide, which is sometimes um, the substance that is in antacid tablets, and it's a base. So magnesium hydroxide, which is the base, will react with the hydro hydrochloric acid, which is the acid in the stomach, and it'll produce magnesium chloride. So magnesium chloride is the salt, and then water. So again, um, that can be written as a word equation, and we'll look at equations uh, more as we go in this unit, but this is what the word equation would look like. Magnesium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid. Then there's the arrow, which shows the products, magnesium chloride and water. So the reactants are always on the left-hand side of the arrow, and the products are on the right-hand side of the arrow. Uh, this is just from the textbook, um, a little did you know some facts about toothpaste. So the toothpaste, the ingredients in toothpaste, they vary by brand, but the most common um, toothpaste, they'll contain these ingredients that are common. So for example, aluminum hydroxide, it's a base. It neutralizes the acids in the mouth that can cause cavities. Another one is sodium bicarbonate. For example, um, in the kitchen, it's baking soda. It also helps to neutralize acids. Fluoride <coughs> is um, used to bond to the enamel of the teeth um, to, again, further protect them from acids in the mouth. Um, abrasives like calcium carbonate, they remove any stains and plaque. There's also detergents. These create the foaming action um, when you're brushing and uh, prevents it from running out while you're brushing. There's also strong flavorings to cover the taste of detergent. And then there's dyes, there's colorings to give it a more pleasing look. Um, an example is titanium dioxide. It's used to make toothpaste look bright white. All right, so next we'll take a look at <coughs> some um, neutralization reactions in this video. I'm just gonna pause it.